Hey everybody, Patty Ann here again. Welcome back. This is class number two, and it's a continuation continuation of the top toolbar, so it's part two. In this one, we're going to go over hoops, display settings, how to merge designs, create letters, and merge stitch files. Now, this is just the, the very beginning, the very surface of doing all of these things, especially for letters, but you'll get the hang of it a little bit. I'm also going to give you a couple of websites to go to where you can get some more designs to add into your library and I'll show you how to do that. So let's go to my software and get started. Okay, as you can see, I already have Embrilliance opened up, and I've already opened up a new page. Notice here it says Untitled Number 1 because I haven't saved it as a name yet. To open it, I simply came up here to this little icon that says New, or I could have gone to File and clicked on that and then New Page. Okay, so the first thing you'll notice, it opens up with a hoop already there, and that's the last size of the hoop that I used. Now, to change the hoop size that you're going to be using, you simply come up here to where it says Preferences, click on that, and notice uh, it comes in and you'll see this whole little window, and right here it says Hoops. If you click on Hoops, it shows you all the hoops that are available. I'm going to go ahead and reset this to the default so it's the way it normally was. And this is how yours will probably come in. I'm using the PES version because I use Brother Machines. Uh, if you use another machine, maybe a Janome, you'd use the JEF hoops. But I'll just show you with the PES or PES ones because it's the same technique for all of them. All right, so I have a couple of different Brother Machines, but the one I'm demonstrating on mostly for you guys is my PE770, which is just like the 7, I mean the 800. The 800 just has a few more bells and whistles that are really nice. But I want to show you now how you can change what you have in here. For example, as you know, the PE800 uses the 4x4 hoop. And sometimes I get tired of coming through here trying to remember which one of these is the 4x4 hoop, right? I mean, I can click on any one of these. Is this the 4x4 hoop? Uh, no, that says that's approximately a 4x12 hoop. Is this it? No. Oh, that's my 5x7 hoop. 130 millimeters by 180 millimeters. Well, so, so I don't have to remember that anymore and come through here looking in case I have a whole slew of hoops. I can come, simply come over here to where it says edit and click on this and it's going to allow me to edit the name of the hoop. So I'm going to put my cursor right before the millimeter measurements and I'm going to put 5 by 7 and hit a couple of line spaces or a couple spaces on my space bar. Then I'll just say OK and check this out now. Instead of it just having the millimeters there, I can scroll through this list and I can see, oh, there's my 5 by 7. Uh, as you know, you also have this one with this machine. When you highlight it, it shows the inches. So it's 4x4, four four, and I have that one. So I'm going to edit it and put my cursor here and say 4x4 four four and hit the bunch of spaces. Or I could even just delete the millimeters if I wanted to and say OK. Another thing that I could do if I want to is go ahead and... Um, delete some of these that I know I don't have. I don't have a 14 by 14, so I could say delete. I don't have a 14 by 8, so I could say delete. If ever I mess up and do something wrong, I can always restore the defaults here, so it's not a problem. Okay, the other thing you need to know about are the multi-position hoops. I have that fabulous one that works for my PE770-800. And it's this one right here. It's the 5x12 hoop. I love this hoop using it. So, you know, what I could do, of course, is go ahead and delete this one because I don't have it. Delete this one. Delete this one. So all I'm left with is the one that I do have for my brother machine that I use for demo purposes. So I need to say apply. Okay. And so if we go there, it applied it to my page. And you can see that really cool big hoop that we can use on our little machines. So the next thing that we can do in here is we can also go to the display settings, which is right here, 
And I have mine to show the grids in lines and I have it in inches. Okay, and if I want to make my metric or millimeters be the same as this, I just click this little button and one inch is the same thing as 25.4 millimeters in case I need to know that. Another thing I can do if I want to, <clears throat> I can change the background color of this whole thing. I could change it to any color I like, but I'm going to leave it as it is. So I'm going to say cancel that. Okay, let me check my notes. And I think that's all I wanted to show you for today in the settings. So I'm going to say OK. And I can X this out. OK, so the next tool is this one, and it's the Merge Design Tool. Now, something weird is going to come up on mine because I do have merely the stitch or the um, badge maker, but I'm not going to put that on this because we're just using in Brilliance. So I'm going to say cancel that. Yours won't say that. What you'll do is you'll come up to this right here, just like this. And there's a catalog word right here. And you can look at these different catalogs. You probably won't have envelopes because I think, I think that came with Merrily, but I'm not positive. Maybe you have it. But here's the thing. With these, they're really cool because if you scroll down here, you can see some different things that you get for free, right? Like you will get applique shapes. Here's a really, here are some really interesting looking applique shapes. Maybe you want to make a puppy dog. So just double click on that and it opens it just like that. Um, I can scroll in so you can see a little bit better. And it says it's an applique paw print over here in the objects panel. If you go to your stitch simulator that we learned about yesterday, look here, there's one, two, three colors. I think there actually are four. Right here there are two colors. And you can tell that by looking down here. The applique position is this first one. Applique material is the second step. And then you have this stitch and this one. So let's just run through this stitch simulator, simulator real quickly. I can drag it across, remember, as I showed yesterday. So this first step here shows you that's the applique position. That's showing you where to put your fabric. Then after you put your fabric on your hoop, this is going to tack it down so it doesn't move. And then the next step is going to begin, oh, some stitching on his paw. That's some extra stitching. And then the last stitch is going around the whole outside of the paw with the satin stitch. So that's how you can use that. So let's go back. I'm going to delete this. Remember, I can click on it over here. Just hit delete on my keyboard. And let's go back in here again where it says Merge Design. Again, you probably won't see this box at all. I'll just say Cancel. And then it's going to open to these things. So again, there's lots of stuff for you to explore in here. I kind of like some of these frames. Look how pretty this one is. Now that obviously isn't going to fit in my 4x4 hoop. So let's see if we come up here to Preferences and I change it to my 5x7 hoop and say Apply. All right, perfect. Now, oops, okay. Now it's going to fit in my 5x7 hoop. Do you want to see the whole hoop? Remember, all you have to do is come up here to this compass rose, click on that, and then click on the letter H for hoop, and it shows your whole hoop within your work area. So this would be really pretty. And again, if you like to, you can go through the stitch simulator and see what's going to happen with this thing. Okay, just like that. Okay, let's go. Now, I want to show you, whoops, not that. I'm going to delete this by coming over here again, hit delete on my keyboard, and I want to show you how you can add some more things to this library, okay? So I'm going to have links down below for you so you can do what I'm going to show you right now. Uh, the links are going to be like this, okay? So the first one we're going to do is we're not going to do the font one. We're going to do the free library designs. 
So I'm going to highlight this, copy, and you'll just have to hit the um, button there below this video. Then I'm going to come to my web address and paste, I'm just going to click here and paste it in here. Once I paste it, it's going to come like this. Now this, if you'll notice at the top, it says 2018 free designs in a library. So these are all these different designs you're going to get for in your library. All you have to do is to scroll way down. Isn't that butterfly beautiful? Scroll way down and here it says here is the link to the zipped file. So you're going to click on that to download it and you can see in my Windows machine it's right down here now. I'm going to double click on this to open it and I can't use it like it is. I have to extract it first. Don't forget that part. You'll be frustrated, I bet you, because you're going to try to use it and it won't work unless you extract all first. And then this is what I've just extracted. Okay, so I can get minimize this. And this is the one I want with the extracted one. I no longer need this window that says extract all. And I'm going to minimize that. Okay, so what I have here now delete some of these things that I had. And what I want to have open now is what I just extracted, right? And I said extract all and this was the window. All I have to do is drag this over and put it right here into Brilliance and bingo, just like that. Let's get rid of this window so you can see what's hiding behind it. It says in Brilliance blog 2018 has been installed in sh in shared. Say OK. So now check this out. If we come up here again to merge design and I just cancel that out, I want you to look at something. If we come up here to the catalog, oh, we have a new one that's showing up here. Shared blog. If I click on that, it's going to show all of these new files that are in my shared blog now and it's fabulous. Look at these here for Valentine's Day, which about, oh my gosh, I did that the other day, you guys too, for Halloween that's coming up. Look how cute this would be, right? Or Christmas is coming. So you can open any one of these. Double click to open it. There it is, isn't that cool? I love it. All right, but that's not all because I have more than that to share with you. Let's look back in this. And there's another one. There are libraries from 2013. So again, you'll just click on that. And I'm going to paste it here so that I can go to this one and show you again how to get it. So hit enter. All right, here are some more designs that you can get. These are what you're going to be getting right here. So again, you're just going to scroll all the way down. And it tells you some directions here too as far as using these. But just scroll all the way down and it says download the zipped file here. So click on that to download it. After it's downloaded, click to open it. Then say extract all. And I leave mine to go right where it says it's going to go into my downloads folder. I say extract. And then it's going to show the three things that were extracted. So again, I can move this page down. I don't, I'm needing it. I don't need this one that said extract all. I don't need this stuff open. And I don't need this. What I do need is my Embrilliance open. And now notice this one has three different things for you to install. There are holiday swirls, there are gift appliques, and there are some other uh, Christmas appliques. So all you have to do is click them one at a time and drag them over here. And after you click one, it should say that it's been installed. Or I think I can go ahead and grab them all. I'm actually able to grab both of those and bring them over here. And it should do both of them. Okay. All right, let's see what we have now. Make sure we've got them all installed. So I'm going to go here, cancel this, uh, go back up here to the catalog in my library. 
Aha! We do have some more. We had this one. And let's see, what is this? One? Oh, look at these that we have. These are appliques. Let's see if we wanted to do this bird as an applique. Okay. So again, we could run the stitch simulator. So you can see what's going to happen. It's going to do the outline or the placement stitch. And then it's going to do the material stitch. And then it's going to do the satin stitch all the way around him. And actually it's going to, on top of that, it's going to do an applique of the wing as well. Okay, I have two more things to show you in this class, but we're kind of running out of time. So these will be broad overviews because we're going to go way in, especially in the lettering, way in depth in those in later classes. So to begin with, just an overview. Create letters, come up here to the letter A and click on it. Every time you start with lettering, it's going to put the A, B, C in here. So what you need to do now, let's say we want to change it. We obviously don't want it to say A, B, C. Let's pretend we want it to say Patty Ann's Place. So all I'm doing is typing that in where it says text over here. And if I hit enter on my keyboard, it comes in just like that. Now, the other thing that I can do is I can change the font that I'm using. So if we come over here where it says ABC block is what we're using. If I click on this down arrow right here, it lets me see all of the fonts <clears throat> that I have on my computer here. But anyway, you can go through these and see what do you like. There's a, a bold cursive one. Here's one, you know, tons of them. Here's one, Stuyvesant. I can never pronounce these things. Old English. I don't think I really like Old English, but that's kind of cool. Okay, and also, you know, you can come here and slant them, your letters, or you can change the spacing between the letters, but we're going to get more into a lot of this at a later time. Okay, we can curve it. This is just to let you know, you can change the color also. Okay, if you want to change the color. Of course, changing the color here isn't going to do much. What matters is what color thread I put in my machine, but I can change the color here, and if... If I'm on palettes, it's just going to show me the colors that are in the project I'm working on right now. If I go to threads, that's going to show me all of the different colors that are available. Okay, after I change the color, my properties panel will look like this. In order to get back to the lettering, in case I've messed something up or want to do something else, I would just click on the letters button. And there we have Patty Ann's place again, Old English. And again, I could change this to something else if I'd like. So, and now this time, well, we'll stop there. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to just delete this. And we're going to come up to um, this tool right here, which is the Merge Stitch File tool. So in order to use that, I'm going to click on it to open it. And it opens up these design files over here on my computer. Wow, I have a lot of stuff, don't I? So let's go into hmm into my I need a good designs. Okay, that's where I sometimes like to buy some of my files. So if I double click and go down in here far enough, I'm gonna to get to my baby lock images. And it opened it like this. And I could go view, right click and say view extra light large icons. So now if I wanted to bring one of these in, let's say, um, I'll bring this stitch file in by double clicking on it. And there it is right there. So I have the one stitch file. Right? Now let's suppose I want to bring in another one. If I want to merge another one into this same area, I just come up here to merge the stitch file. Okay, I can go back into Anita Good Design and double click on this and then just bring in any one of these that I want to with it. So notice what that did now. It made a mess, right? But it brought both of these into the same page, both of these stitch files. If on the other hand, I had just gone to File and Open, 
what this would do is open it in a whole new page. So there it is. So it opens it into a new page, right? If I wanted to open something up with this in the same design page, I have to use this, which is merge the stitch file. And let's see, I got that from the downloads. Let's see, here's my downloads. Let's say I want to down bring in um, this little cute thing. Okay, so then I have them both in the same page, right? So file and open opens it into its own page, whereas this one, which was merge stitch file, brings it so both of the stitch files are in the same page. So I hope this makes sense and I hope it helps. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. Also, you might want to join us in our Facebook group. Um, also, you know, if you're in the market to buy something, please use my links down below. It really helps to keep Patty Ann's place going. So I guess that's it for this one. And I'll see you again in the next class. Bye for now.